Hope you enjoyed yesterday's video. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it right now. Along with making up all those handles today, which if you remember, we finished prepping all the knives uh, on Saturday evening. Uh, for handles to do today, we also have this knife. Now, I had a friend contact me on Instagram, and her grandmother, who lives here in Newfoundland, has this knife. I believe she's had it a long time. It's her absolute favorite knife, but the handle's just disintegrated. And if you can see, it's a partial tang knife here. So, that makes total sense. That happens, they break down over time because they don't have the stability. But this is her favorite knife, and she wanted to know if there was something I could do to put a new handle on it. Now it's pretty much worn off, but I can see right here there's a there's an etching just ever so slightly that says this knife was made in Salingen, Germany. Can almost can almost get the brand name, but but I can't. My eyes won't get it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build a tang here. I thought about filling in with a with a three thirty seconds micarta. And uh, but then you'd see the tang and it just wouldn't be a good look. I'm not sure what type of uh, handle this thing had on it. It looks like, see the inside of the tang here wasn't exposed so the handle would have been out. There might have been like a notch cut down in wood or something that it was sat in and riveted. The pins are still on there. I'm going to cut those out because we're going to do our own pins. We're going to extend this tang. See what these are made of. There might be any way to cut them. This one seems to be seized in there. Some tape on there. Yeah? So I've ground inside bevels all the way around. Now keep in mind this is a very rough shape until I get it tacked and welded in place. Uh, I'm not too concerned about the shape, I just roughed it out. I have no idea what the original handle looked like on this knife either. So I'm just going with something that I think looks nice and makes sense for the size of the knife. So I'm going to put a couple little tacks here now, have a look at it, then we'll run a bead and this channel will allow us to ground this tang off flat and still have a weld in there. We'll use very low heat and I have a bottle of water, ice cold water here for cooling, but we're back in ice ways from the blade, so with just a series of little tacks, we won't have any heat issue at all. Everything's held in place here with some little magnets. I, I keep big packs of magnets on hand because I find them great for welding. going to grind off a little bit of the excess and then I'll uh, fill in a few tacks again because this is so thin it's pretty messy here. So there we have it. It isn't the absolute prettiest, but it doesn't have to be yet. It's all filled in with weld. Everything is super strong. I've been tacking on it with the hammer to get it dead straight, which it is. It's got a, it's got a beautifully straight tang there now. And the important thing is that you get this edge smooth. You notice there's no break in that tang. 
so you would never know once the scales gets on there that this wasn't a full length tank same thing goes for the inside here I also filled in the uh, filled in the previous pinholes because we'll want to arrange those back a little further I also built this up a little bit in right here it's a little thin at first so you can see I built it up with a little bit of weld just so it's got a little bit more meat and it doesn't come too slender there because now we're not going to be outside of that with the handle we're going to be flush with that so I think this shape looks good we'll have a little bit of room to play with it later once the handle goes on, of course, we can bring it in and contour it how we want. But uh, let me know in the comment section right now what you think of that sh shape I chose with this knife. I don't think it's too big. It's got a little bit of shape to it, a little bit of contouring. Feels good in the hand, the size. I rounded everything off so you can get it actually in your hand. I don't know. Let me know. It's quarter after three here in the day now, and I have all of those blades glue up including that uh, that little German knife. Let's take a look here at what we chose. One of the mirror polished Santokus is getting that zebra pattern, micarta, with the red liners. Then we have a polished Islander there is getting black walnut. That little German knife is getting some grey dyed curly maple. That's going to be beautiful. Stabilized wood. We have a Tuckamore here with yellow camel micarta. We have a that belt finish Sentoku is getting black micarta and brass pins. And then that set is getting some bird's eye birch. Bird's eye, it's also got some burrow in there, but primarily bird's eye is really wild stuff, along with white micarta liners, brass pins, and then the, the big one there is getting the thong tube there as well. I gotta get those inside now in the warmer temperatures to get the, the glue to set up overnight and then we're on the home stretch to doing a couple build series to get knives up on the site. I'm thinking of doing a batch of maybe Tuckamores, maybe I'll do a batch of baked apples, give you a chance to buy those that, since my custom books are closed, anything I made from, make from here on out is available for you guys to jump on.